Did you know that I learned to communicate, read, and write despite being deaf and blind? I am Helen Keller. I defied all the odds by graduating from college. However, my life wasn't always a beacon of hope. The fever I had at 19 months changed my world forever. I was born on June 27, 1880 in Tuscumbia, Alabama. When I was just 19 months old, a severe fever left me deaf and blind. My world turned dark and silent. My childhood was a time of frustration and anger due to my inability to communicate which led to tantrums. Then, at the age of seven, my life changed forever when Anne Sullivan came as my instructor. With her guidance, I learned to communicate using sign language on the palm of my hand. As I grew up, I developed an unbreakable love for learning. In time, I attended Radcliffe College, becoming the first deafblind person to earn a college degree. My passion for learning led me to attend Radcliffe College, a remarkable feat given my circumstances. Not only was I admitted, but in 1904, I graduated, becoming the first deafblind person to earn a college degree. During my years at Radcliffe, every book had to be spelled into my hand, representing hours and hours of work. Yet, my thirst for knowledge was insatiable. Despite my academic and professional achievements, my personal life had its own complexities. It was rumored that I had a romantic relationship with Peter Fagan, but it was short-lived due to the circumstances and social expectations of the time. Throughout my youth, I learned that challenges can be overcome with determination, and that love and support can illuminate even the darkest of times. One of my most notable accomplishments was learning to communicate, despite being deaf and blind. With the patience and dedication of my beloved teacher, Anne Sullivan, I overcame communication barriers. She began by spelling letters on the palm of my hand, and that became our secret code. One day while by a well, Anne let water run over one hand while spelling water on the other. At that moment, I understood the connection between the object and the word, and it was an epiphany. Beyond education, I also became a fierce advocate for the rights of disabled people and other social causes. I traveled the world giving lectures and sharing my story to inspire others and draw attention to the need for education and support for the disabled. An interesting fact is that I had the opportunity to meet several U.S. presidents and notable international figures. However, what many do not know is that, in 1919, The Miracle Worker, a film about my life and relationship with Anne, was made. This story was later adapted in various formats, reinforcing the impact and inspiration my life offered to people worldwide. As the shadows of old age loomed over me, I prepared to face the final challenge of my life. I had endured the loss of my most essential senses, sight and hearing, and had gone through years of frustration before finding light in Anne Sullivan. But fate still had some tests for me. Before my departure, I suffered several health setbacks that undermined my physical strength. A heartbreaking fact was the loss of my beloved Anne in 1936. She had been my guide, my rock, and the window through which I experienced the world. My heart was deeply wounded, and although I continued working and championing the causes that mattered to me, I felt her absence at every turn. Death finally caught up with me on June 1, 1968, at the age of 87. I left in peace, having lived a life many would consider impossible given my circumstances. Now reflecting on my journey, one can see it's not adversity that defines a person, but how one faces it. Despite countless barriers, I left a legacy of resilience, inspiration, and change in the world. My story is a testament that with determination, support, and love, one can overcome the most insurmountable adversities. Before you go, I invite you to subscribe and continue watching more videos about other individuals who, like me, left an indelible mark on history. Their lives and achievements also deserve to be known and celebrated. Until next time.